Hey, what's up guys? This is Terrence Lewis with Lewis Helps here with another video. Again, empowering veterans, members of the military, their family members to become financially free through financial literacy and investing in real estate. All right guys, so check this out. I'm Terrence Lewis. I've got a video for you guys today. This one here is going to be getting a smoking deal on that next real estate buy. Whether it's for your primary residence or for an investment, this is gonna be some strategies that I use to get smoking good deals on my real estate projects. Coming up right now. All right guys, what's up man? You know, as I do, I got a couple notes here for you guys. We're gonna stay, we have to create a quick little outline. I'm gonna show you guys how I get smoking good deals on my real estate projects. A lot of this comes from my, my investment career in real estate. Um, some of it comes from just doing hundreds of transactions as a loan officer, um, combining those together to give you the condensed version of how you can do some simple things to get great deals on your next real estate project, okay? So we'll go right, dive right into it, and I'll go through an outline, okay guys? So check this out. Criteria is gonna be our number one thing. So what we're gonna cover here really quick in this video is the criteria, different things that, you can, uh, that you're gonna have to do to establish uh, kind of a checklist, a to-do list, on how to find this next property and you want to stay to the end because i got a little secret to that the, 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 the secret tip that i use slam dunk deals time and time again and get smoking good deals okay so let's dive right in now number one i was taught very early on in my real estate career you make your money when you buy whether i'm buying my primary home or I'm buying investment property, I don't wanna pay retail for nothing. I wanna get as good of a deal as possible, okay? So I'm gonna show you some of these strategies that I use, okay? First of all, first and foremost, before you even get into the process of buying a house, you wanna create a criteria. This is an outline, so that way you don't get distracted with, oh, there's a duplex over here. Oh, look, there's a house that's you know a condo over here. Oh, look, here's a two-story right here. Create a, a criteria of what you're looking for, if you're looking for an investment property, you wanna swim in the big pool. I always tell people swim in the big pool, not the jacuzzi. Go after houses that when it's time to sell, you're in a large demographic, three bedroom, two baths, yard, uh, you know, the basics, two car garage, the basic package that most homeowners want and are looking, okay? So create your criteria. So you wanna go through the area that you wanna be in, the lot size that you want, the bedrooms that you need, bathrooms that you need, square footage that you gotta have, school districts that you wanna be in. So create this criteria of the home that you're looking for. And remember, the, the larger this list is, the harder it's gonna be for you to find. When you're buying your first property, your first investment property, your first primary dwelling, this is a stepping stool. Most Americans didn't have a parent that just handed them down a property. Each one of my kids will have a real estate property that is owned almost free and clear by the time they graduate college to start their life. Hopefully you can do the same. I encourage you to do the same. It's very easy. And I'll show you that in a couple of videos. But create this criteria that is the bare minimum of what you and your family need. If you're looking for a criteria for an investment, you have to go and look at the videos that I have on uh, how to uh, buy investment properties, okay? But we're gonna just focus on buying yourself a house first, okay? Because your house that you can be that you can purchase can be one of the best assets that you've ever purchased. It can help build really good equity in it. You can enjoy it, and you can use that as a vehicle to help you start an investment career. Okay, so we want to create a criteria. All right. Next thing we want to do is create a strategy on going out and finding out these properties, finding where what we're going to do. I look at these strategies as fishing poles. If you've ever been fishing, you need. I don't like to just fish with one pole. I like to have three or four different poles in the water, this increases my chances. That's why I'm like, hey, get away, man. I got this whole space here on the lake, right? So I got a pole here, pole here, pole here. I wanna take this whole area, any fish in this vicinity is coming my way, right? So that's the kind of fishing that I do. And that's the same way I look for real estate. Some of these strategies uh, include driving, your, the, the very simplistic easiest way that I find deals is walking my dog, believe it or not, okay? Now let's back up here for a second. Let's bait our, our poles. The bait on the pole, what are we gonna throw out to these fish? We wanna look into uh, doing letters, okay? Writing a simple letter that just says, hi, my name is Terrence Lewis, or hi, my name is, my wife's name is Tay, Tay and Ter Terrence and Tay Lewis. Um, with our family of three, we're looking for a beautiful home in this area. 
If you're interested in selling your home at 123 Elm Street, we would love to talk to you further about selling your home to us. Um, you can even put in there that you're a cash uh, buyer, okay? And I'll talk to you a little bit more about the strategy on, on that, em the emphasis of doing the cash, the strategy behind it, okay? You can also do postcards, okay? And I'll show you an example of what my postcards look like. And so those are some, some strategies that you can do. You can do signs, you can do a lot of different things to put as bait on the other end of these strategies that I'm gonna give you, okay? Now, driving around your neighborhood, driving around these neighborhoods that you wanna look for. You wanna look for distressed properties. Okay, so properties that look like they're falling apart, properties that look like the person may be having some financial struggles and may, you know, roofs that are, are um, a little bit distressed. The yard looks a little distressed. Now, keep in mind, these things are cosmetic. Don't get wrapped up in it. You want to find a very good, you want to find the house in a neighborhood. You want to find the square footage that you're looking for because in real estate, it's all stick and concrete and drywall and trim baseboard and cabinetry it's it's all aesthetics okay um so again don't be too picky about that if you're going to find a good deal you've got to take some some discomfort somewhere if not you probably wouldn't be looking at this video anyway but there are a few strategies that you can use in this video even if you are looking for a good home just str strategically okay now where are some of these places uh outside of driving around the neighborhoods and looking for these places and walking your dogs and looking for places that are distressed you can find houses that are perfectly good situation uh, perfectly good um good condition but maybe the person that owns them is going through a foreclosure maybe they're going through a divorce maybe it's a landlord that was investing and now they're a little too old and now they're ready to uh offload the property and that's one thing i love about real estate is that it's a people uh, it's a people and an emotional uh, entity. Unlike a stock, a stock is what it is. There's nothing you can do to change a stock. Okay, you just predict it and go from there. But real estate, it's a people item. There's people that pass away and leave houses to uh, family members that live on the other side of the country. There's people that um, get homes inherited to them. There's people that are are getting ready to leave the country. There's people that get jobs in other states and now they want to up and leave and they got to dump that house so they can get onto this other house and move on with their life okay so there's a lot of different reasons why people and when you close your mind off to if you if you're so close minded like why would this person walk away from forty thousand dollars why would this person walk away from as soon as you close your mind off to that you close your mind off to the possibilities of what everyone else in real estate knows which is it's out there and i do it time and time again there's plenty of properties with equity built in already okay so where can I find some of these lists? There's companies like CoreLogic, ListSource. There's a lot of different companies, so just Google uh, buying pre-foreclosure lists, right? And so you can actually contact, ListSource is a great one. You can contact ListSource and say, hey, here's this criteria of what I'm looking for in this, and they'll give you a list of individuals, names, addresses of individuals that are in that specific area that are in pre-foreclosure, that have got a notice of default. Uh, you can go down to the local uh, uh, courthouse and get divorce records of, of individuals that are, have filed for divorce, individuals that have, are landlord eviction cases, and you can mail those letters that bait to those individuals. So those are a couple strategies. There's quite a bit more out there. You want to start digging down that rabbit hole to find out. You can even type that into YouTube, ways to find distressed homeowners, okay? And so what you want to do. So now let's talk into the strategy of how we negotiate that. How do we negotiate um, this, this price, right? Now, there's two types of homes. There's homes that are on the market and there's homes that are not on the market that you found yourself. I'm going to talk about the homes that are on the market. Then we'll talk about the ones that are not on the market that you found from walking your dog or sending a letter to. Homes that are on the market, there's process is, is that an agent has paid, uh, the person that's selling the home has paid an agent four to six percent to help them sell that home. Okay. Now if you come to that, to that homeowner, that seller of that home with an agent. Now their agent and your agent have to split that commission. Now, if you go to that agent directly, that seller, the listing agent directly, what they can do is sometimes they'll be willing to take piece of that commission that they didn't have to split with your agent, take a small piece of that, credit that to the seller of the home, and in turn, that seller can contribute that to your cost or to help lower the price of the house. So 
So sometimes you'll get a more favorable price by just going directly to the listing agent. That's another good strategy on how to eliminate your closing costs, which is a whole other video that I can share with you guys on how to eliminate closing costs, okay? Um, and again, uh, going directly to uh, uh, the listing agent can help get you a little bit better of a price on that. Now, the houses that are not on the market, first and foremost, you've already recognized that there's no agent commission that has to be paid. So when you look at what the value of the home is and you see what, what the house is going for, you can automatically talk to the individual and let them know that they're not getting, they're not paying any commissions, okay, for agents. So immediately you can go in and start the process of negotiating uh, below market value on those properties, okay? Um, immediately, any of these properties that you find that are off the market are typically going to be more, uh, that are going to be more cheaper and more wiggle room to negotiate than properties that are on the market, okay? So I hope this was a quick little video to help you guys out on some strategies that I use of finding these properties. Again, this is a lot of information to take on. The synopsis just really quickly is find a few different strategies that are going out. You can drive around in your neighborhood and look for properties that are distressed. You can go to CoreLogic or a list source, find a list of individuals, names and numbers that are have been in default or are not owners or not absent. They're absentee owners that actually don't live in the house that they, that they own um, or landlord evictions. So, and again, you wanna send letters or postcards out to those individuals just stating that you're interested in buying their home. I hope this was a helpful video. Please, if you enjoyed it and you got some information from it, please like and subscribe. There's gonna be a lot more content coming out from um, buying investment properties using your VA loan. There's gonna be um, how to buy a house with no money down. We're gonna do credit building uh, videos. So there's gonna be a lot of content that we're gonna to bring to you. Hopefully this was helpful. Please share, like, subscribe. Thank you for watching and we'll see you soon.